Okay, so <coughs> we are trying to prove in this lecture that this uh, uh, modular function weight 2 modular function lambda that we uh, constructed last time using the phase function the Weierstrass phase function is indeed a uh, weight 2 modular form namely that it is uh, invariant under the action of uh, the congruence 2 congruence mod 2 subgroup of the group PSL 2 Z of unimodular vectors of unimodular uh, matrices okay which we think of as uh, Mobius transformations okay. So let me recall um, uh, so we have uh, um, we have the following situation we have uh, uh, just to again uh, recall the notation see we fix uh, we fix uh, tau in the upper half plane uh, this is the set of all z all those complex numbers such that in the imaginary part of z is positive okay and then uh, associated with tau we have the lattice L of tau which is uh, all those complex numbers of the form n plus m tau where n and m are integers and uh, uh, then we have the torus associated to this tau which is just uh, so you have the complex plane and then you have uh, you have to go modulo uh, the action of L tau uh, which means that you think of each L tau uh, each element of L tau as translation by that element of L tau okay. So uh, and of course you know these translations are certainly uh, they are certainly uh, Mobius transformations okay uh, they are automorphic uh, they are holomorphic uh, automorphisms of uh, the complex plane and if you uh, so this map is uh, just the map that sends every complex number to uh, a, its equivalence class under this uh, under this action okay or I should say uh, to the orbit under this action all right. So so the if you want to think of it as an equivalence of course two complex numbers here are equivalent that is they go to the same point below if and only if their difference is an element of L tau okay. So this is this is our T tau and uh, uh, we were trying to get hold of invariance for uh, you know uh, uh, these uh, these uh, complex one dimensional tori and uh, and therefore we were forced to look at functions on them okay and uh, there are no holomorphic functions so we constructed the uh, the associated uh, Weierstrass phi function uh, which is uh, given by this uh, explicit formula uh, uh, 1 by z squared which is the singular part at the origin uh, and summation over omega in the lattice omega is not equal to 0 of 1 by z minus omega the whole squared minus 1 by omega squared this is the this is the waste as phi function and uh, then um, well we we found that uh, the waste as phi function satisfied uh, a differential equation which is uh, uh, so let me let me write down properly it is uh, I guess uh, uh, yeah here p tau prime z the whole squared is equal to 4 times p tau z the whole cube minus minus g2 of tau uh, into uh, p tau of z minus g3 of tau where g2 and g3 are certain numbers that depend on tau uh, and then uh, we also factorized this as um, thinking of the right side as a polynomial in the variable p tau of z we factorized it as 4 times p tau of uh, z minus uh, uh, e1 into p tau of z minus e2 uh, into p tau of z minus e3 and of course uh, and we found that uh, and of course e1 e2 and e3 are uh, well uh, they they are the zeros of the right side so they are the zeros of the left side and that is a method we use to find out what the 
what E1, E2, E3 are they are exactly the zeros of uh, uh, of the of this elliptic function okay uh, and uh, so we found we in fact we set E1 to be uh, P tau of half uh, E2 to be P tau of uh, uh, tau by 2 and uh, E3 to be P tau of uh, 1 plus tau by 2. So this is what uh, uh, we took for these 3 values up to a permutation this is the choice that we could make um, and uh, then uh, we also uh, we then cooked up uh, uh, now uh, all this depends on tau which is varying in the upper half plane. So what we did is that we, we realized that even uh, all these 3 uh, no matter what your value of tau in the upper half plane is all these 3 are distinct and therefore we constructed the function lambda of tau which was uh, which was I guess uh, uh, so let me write it properly it is E3 minus E2 E3 minus E2 by uh, E1 minus E2. So this uh, so this is a so 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 we got hold of uh, we got hold of a, we got hold of a function lambda. Uh, from on the upper half plane taking values in the complex plane and we found that this uh, this function is uh, in fact uh, analytic and uh, it is never equal to 0 and it never takes the value uh, 1 okay. So this is analytic which means by which I mean holomorphic okay holomorphic uh, uh, never equal to 0 or 1 okay so we we constructed this function so uh, i mean all this the whole point of this uh, the argument so far was to get hold of uh, some function on the upper half plane okay but uh, the story has to continue because we want a function which is uh, which depends only on the isomorphic class isomorphism class holomorphic isomorphism class of the torus okay that means that function has to be invariant under the action of psl to z and uh, therefore you want a function which is invariant under that uh, on the group of uh, on this subgroup uh, of Mobius uh, transformations and then uh, the point is that this is only a first step in the sense that this is not uh, uh, this is not invariant under the whole sub whole uh, group PSL 2 z but it is invariant only under the subgroup of all those elements of PSL 2 z whose coefficients if you reduce them mod 2 you get the identity matrix 2 by 2 identity matrix okay. So, uh, so let me um, so that uh, so I will have to so the purpose of this lecture is to prove that this is uh, this is uh, this is uh, indeed uh, a function that satisfies those properties. So usually an analytic function or a meromorphic function which is uh, which, uh, which which is invariant under a group of Mobius transformations is called an automorphic form or an automorphic function. Okay, and in particular, if the group is a group of, uh, it's a subgroup, or a related group of uh, uh, of uh, of the unimodular group, okay, PSL two Z, then uh, we say that the function is a modular function or a modular form, okay, and uh, so we we have we have to prove that this is a modular form of weight two, okay. So uh, so let me let me make a few comments. So the first thing I want to say is that you see. Uh, uh, See, we have uh, from SL two Z uh, to uh, SL two Z mod two Z mod two Z. Uh, that is this phi two. This is the uh, so we have a map like this, which which just sends uh, well any uh, uh, alpha beta gamma delta uh, any any element of SL two Z to simply uh, this the same element but with each entry red mod 2 okay. So this is alpha uh, mod uh, mod 2 uh, beta mod 2 and then gamma mod 2 and this will be uh, delta mod 2 okay. It goes to it goes to this element and mind you uh, z mod 2 z is uh, is just 0 or 1 uh, it is exactly the uh, integers red modulo 2 okay and the fact is that this this map 
uh, phi 2 is a, uh, is a group homomorphism namely uh, it respects the multiplication uh, on the left side these are matrices with determinant 1 and the under multiplication the left side forms a group and the similarly the right side also forms a group the only thing is that the coefficients are taken from z mod 2 z okay and uh, this map is a homomorphism of groups that is uh, that is very very simple because reading modulo uh, uh, modulo 2 uh, will respect addition multiplication uh, it is a ring homomorphism okay. So you can see that this is a group homomorphism and you see uh, uh, what is the what is the kernel of this group homomorphism the kernel of this group homomorphism is precisely the congruence mod 2 subgroup okay. So the kernel of uh, phi 2 is precisely uh, the uh, congruence mod 2 subgroup of uh, SL2C namely uh, it is all those elements uh, of this form in SL2C. So of course you must remember that uh, uh, alpha, beta, gamma, delta are integers and uh, alpha, delta minus beta, gamma is equal to 1 okay and <coughs> the uh, all those elements here which mod 2 look like 1 0 0 1 are precisely in the kernel of this map and you know the kernel is a normal subgroup. So you see this is this uh, uh, the kernel of phi 2 is uh, is a normal subgroup it is a normal subgroup and uh, and and contains and contains uh, uh, the uh, subgroup given by plus or minus identity okay i2 is the 2 by 2 identity matrix 1 0 0 1 okay row wise mm. and uh, uh, of course this 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 map maps both of these guys onto the identity matrix there okay Ma you must remember that mod 2 minus 1 is the same as plus 1 okay. So uh, it is a normal subgroup so uh, the point is that uh, if you if you take uh, if you take the quotient of quotient of SL2Z by plus or minus I2 you get PSL2Z and that will contain uh, the uh, quotient of SL2Z uh, uh, th that will contain the, uh, the quotient of uh, the kernel of phi 2 by plus or minus I2 which will give you the congruence mod 2 subgroup of PSL2Z okay. So, uh, so let me write that SL2Z uh, mod uh, uh, I should say uh, yeah plus or minus i2 which is uh, which by definition is PSL2C uh, contains um, contains as a subgroup contains as a subgroup uh, uh, kernel of uh, phi 2 modulo plus or minus i2 and this is precisely uh, the the subgroup PSL to Z I will put subscript 2 to say that this is the congruence 2 subgroup congruence mod 2 subgroup of PSL to Z okay and of course this this symbol is just to tell you that this is subgroup of this right and <coughs> so what is the claim the claim is that for every so now you must understand now you must realize that uh, you should uh, what we are doing is we think of elements of PSL to Z as Mobius transformations and then uh, you know that PSL 2 Z is a subgroup of PSL 2 R which is precisely the set of holomorphic automorphisms of the upper half plane. So this is a subgroup of uh, holomorphic these are subgroup of Mobius uh, maps of the upper half plane onto itself and what you want to say is that this function which is defined in the upper half plane uh, it is actually invariant under this subgroup not under the whole uh, unimodular group this is the unimodular group but under this subgroup. So the so the so let me precisely write the claim the, the theorem is uh, uh, lambda is invariant under uh, uh, the action of uh, ps under the action of psl2 z congruence mod 2 subgroup okay so this is this is the theorem so so in other words that what does this mean this means that you know if you take uh, if you take uh, uh, if you take an element alpha beta 
gamma delta uh, in uh, PSL uh, 2 z sub 2 okay when I when I write something like this I mean of course you know uh, uh, I mean an equivalence class I have put a square bracket outside to tell you that uh, this is a representative of an equivalence class in the quotient so it could vary by it could change by sign okay and uh, 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 this implies that you know if you if you take uh, lambda uh, of a of, of a tau okay you evaluate lambda at a point tau on the upper half plane this is going to be the same as evaluating lambda on the image of tau under the Mobius transformation that is defined by this element of PSL 2 z okay. So, uh, so this is equal to lambda times alpha uh, tau plus beta by gamma tau plus delta. So, that is that is the statement okay so this is the statement. So, this is the statement so in so in particular what is the importance of this the importance of this is uh, this is a very good example of an automorphic function. Uh, a certain analytic function in this case it is actually analytic lambda is an analytic function and uh, so it is a modular form and uh, uh, and it is invariant it is invariant under the congruence mod 2 subgroup okay. So, this whole this so uh, this whole lecture is devoted to trying to prove this statement okay. So, and of course you know uh, what next is once you know that uh, you have get gotten hold of a function that is uh, that is invariant modulo the subgroup somehow you will try to you try to extend uh, you try to construct another function which is will be more uh, invariant under on the uh, under the action of the full PSL 2 z and that function will give you uh, that function will be constant on orbits of PSL 2 z and you know orbits of PSL 2 z in the upper half plane are precisely uh, isomorphism holomorphic isomorphism classes of complex tori and so you get an invariant that is an, a quantity that depends only on the holomorphic isomorphism class of the torus okay. So, uh, so let us try to uh, so this is uh, so the proof of this is what we are going to do. Uh, so, uh, to do this uh, we will have to I will have to recall uh, uh, I will I will use uh, the same notation that I used in an earlier lecture. Uh, so, I will have to recall what I did um, in, uh, uh, in 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 lecture 24 okay. So, this was uh, you know I mean this was how we prove that uh, the uh, this uh, two uh, uh, two complex tori okay uh, which are associated to tau 1 and tau 2 in the upper half plane are holomorphically isomorphic if and only if tau 1 and tau 2 differ by an element of PSL 2 z okay. So, I will I will recall I will recall exactly what I wrote down in that lecture part of it which I need for our calculations. So, you see uh, and you know that was the uh, that was the uh, the statement that we proved in order to show that I mean essentially that statement showed that finally after we proved it it showed us that you know uh, the uh, taking the upper half plane and going modulo PSL 2 z namely taking the PSL 2 z orbits in the upper half plane is exactly bijective to the set of holomorphic isomorphism classes uh, of uh, complex tori okay of the form T sub tau okay. So, uh, well so I will recall what we did. So, you see see so we had so we had uh, we took tau 1 so so take tau 1 and tau 2 in the upper half plane okay and then you have uh, these uh, so you have uh, P sub tau 1 uh, this is the projection uh, from C to C mod uh, L of tau 1 that which is which gives you the torus associated to tau 1 and then you also have from C to uh, uh, C mod L of tau 2 uh, that is uh, the torus associated to tau 2 and uh, if you remember what we did was you know we did the following thing suppose you are given a uh, suppose uh, given uh, suppose you are given a holomorphic isomorphism. holomorphic isomorphism f from this torus to that torus okay. Suppose uh, these two tori were holomorphically isomorphic then uh, what we did was you see we used the theory of uh, uh, covering spaces 
mind you these two are universal covers okay we used the theory of covering spaces to lift this map all the way to give a Mobius transformation B okay so that this diagram commutes okay we got we lifted F to a, a Mobius transformation B which is uh, which was an automorphism of uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the complex plane holomorphic automorphism of complex plane okay and in fact uh, what uh, we did was well uh, uh, the uh, 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 a diagram like this the, a diagram like this induced a diagram uh, at the level of fundamental groups okay and uh, so so what we did was well we I, I guess we uh, if I go back to that uh, lecture I think we took a point uh, z1 here okay and assumed that z1 goes to the point z2 here okay under under uh, uh, under b and then you assume that uh, z1 goes to a point uh, x1 uh, in the torus below and z2 uh, well goes to a point uh, well x2 in this torus t tau 2 and of course f takes x1 to x2 okay. So, uh, so let me write that down here uh, b of uh, z1 is equal to z2 uh, p tau 1 of z1 is x1 p tau 2 of z2 was x2 and uh, then f took x1 to x2. I mean the whole the, the point is we are fixing base points in a nice way so that uh, uh, we can identify fundamental groups based at those points. So this because taking the taking the uh, fundamental group is uh, a functorial operation this gave us uh, this gave us uh, uh, an identification of uh, the the fundamental group of this torus at this point with uh, uh, well the, uh, the, the conjugate of this becomes the conjugate of uh, be becomes a uh, becomes the uh, fundamental group here okay. So, uh, so let me write that down in fact um, you see uh, you know that whenever you have a covering like this uh, if you take uh, the uh, uh, the map induced by uh, you know um, um, yeah so I should say that the fundamental group of the base below is exactly the deck transformation group okay and the deck transformation group uh, is uh, canonically identified with uh, naturally identified with L of tau 1. So you see what happened is uh, so we got uh, th so you have deck of the deck transformation group of uh, 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 p tau 1 p sub tau 1 to the deck transformation group of p sub tau 2 we had an isomorphism okay and this was conjugation by b that is this was by the map a going to b a b inverse okay we got this uh, because of this uh, diagram we got this because of this diagram right and uh, and well uh, so uh, but mind you that the the deck transformation group of uh, p sub tau 1 uh, is uh, is canonically identified with l sub tau 1 okay and the deck transformation of uh, group of p sub uh, of so this is this is this map is p sub tau 2 okay that is canonically uh, and the fundamental group below is canonically identified with the deck transformation group uh, uh, of the uh, uh, of the of this cover all right so uh, by looking at this diagram we got this okay and the this deck transformation group here is actually l of tau 1 okay and so i should say isomorphic to and this is isomorphic naturally to l of tau 2 uh, in what sense the deck transformation group in p tau 1 uh, uh, consists precisely of translations by elements of l tau 1 and the deck transformation group p tau 2 consists precisely of translations by l tau by elements of l tau 2 and then you are identifying a translation with the element by which you are translating so this is the isomorphism okay. uh, we always tend to identify uh, the, the group of translations is uh, group under addition okay because composition of translations uh, effectively is addition of the 
uh, translating vectors okay. So uh, this is an additive group of uh, translations and that is uh, identified with this with this group and it is in fact this is a z module it is a discrete z module we have we have seen all that earlier okay. So this is a natural identification so what it so what it tells you is that you know uh, this uh, this uh, 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 th this group here you know uh, uh, this lattice is generated by 1 and tau 2 okay. In other words we uh, what I am trying to say is that this deck transformation group is generated by the translations by 1 and translations by tau 2 and this transformation deck transformation group is generated by translations by 1 and translations by tau 1 okay and because of this what you can write is that you can write that uh, so we can write is you assume that you know uh, uh, so you know if I take the element z going to uh, uh, if I take the element uh, uh, so let me write on the right side z going to z plus 1 the element z going to z plus 1 it is a translation okay it is an element of this uh, tra deck transformation group and uh, because this is an isomorphism it comes from a deck transformation here and that deck transformation uh, uh, just not to confuse notations I will continue with that old the old notations that I used in that in lecture 24 uh, it is z going to z plus alpha tau 1 plus beta okay. So this was the map okay uh, and then similarly the other generator of this is z going to z plus tau 2 that is the other uh, translation and uh, that is the other generator of the deck transformation group and uh, we assume that that comes from z going to z plus uh, uh, gamma tau 1 plus delta so we assume this okay uh, this is exactly what I used in that lecture so I am continuing to use this. So and then uh, so this is how we got these integers alpha beta gamma delta uh, we got these 4 integers and then we found that in fact we found that we got this matrix we got this element uh, 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 gamma delta alpha beta we got this element in uh, SL 2 Z we got this element in SL 2 Z we proved that gamma beta minus delta alpha is equal to 1 okay and we proved that this element actually takes uh, uh, tau 1 to tau 2 okay. In other words this element considered as a Mobius transformation namely you consider uh, it as a Mobius transformation z going to gamma z plus delta by alpha z plus beta for that Mobius transformation if you apply it on tau 1 the image is tau 2. So uh, we, we found that gamma tau 1 gamma tau 1 plus delta by alpha tau 1 plus beta is equal to uh, 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 is equal to tau 2 this is what we got. So uh, in fact so with this we proved that you know if there is an isomorphism between uh, the tori defined by tau 1 and tau 2 then there exists. Uh, uh, an element of SL2Z and therefore you could also take its image in PSL2Z that element takes there is an element which moves tau 1 to tau 2 that means tau 1 and tau 2 are in the same orbit for the action of PSL2Z on the upper half plane. Conversely we said that the whole argument can be reversed and how was it, how was it how will how could we reverse it in fact uh, you could reverse it because there is a nice formula for B b turned out to be a uh, so b turned out to be the following it turned out to be uh, um, a uh, a 0 0 1 by a uh, as an element of uh, uh, written as an element of PSL 2 C in fact uh, uh, so you know uh, I am uh, a representation for a Mobius transformation uh, uh, whenever we represent Mobius transformations by 2 by 2 matrices we insist that uh, the uh, the determinant is uh, is 1 okay. So uh, so B turned out to be this with A being uh, uh, a, a square root of uh, uh, alpha tau 1 plus beta and which also turned out to be equal to uh, the corresponding square root of tau 2 uh, by uh, gamma tau 1 uh, plus delta that is I mean this is just because of this okay. So uh, so the point is that uh, 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 given f you get this b and then from the uh, from the by looking at the fundamental groups the, the covering groups 
you get this uh, element of SL2 Z and uh, uh, you can conversely suppose I am given uh, an element of this uh, of SL2 Z which takes tau 1 to tau 2 then you see I can uh, I can define B by this uh, by 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 these equations okay and then you can check that this P will give me uh, a, a, a Mobius map it will give me a holomorphic automorphism of C and that B will take uh, uh, you see uh, that B will take the lattice here L tau 1 to the lattice there see because you can you can see what is happening is that see B if you write B of Z you see B of Z is just uh, B of Z is just A square times uh, uh, you see it is just A Z plus 0 by 0 Z plus 1 by A so it is just A square Z it is just multiplication by A square okay. So you see uh, so B of Z you see is uh, is in fact B of Z is uh, uh, is an additive map okay and uh, uh, in fact it is uh, in fact you can see that B of Z is uh, well uh, z times b of 1 okay because uh, after all a squared is b of 1 okay. So b of z is z times b of 1 and uh, b of z is uh, b of z uh, uh, is additive namely b of z1 plus z2 is b of z1 plus b of z2 because it is just multiplication by a scalar okay, namely a squared okay. So, uh, so what happens is that you see b of z uh, uh, by our by our assumption what B does is well uh, you see it takes Z1 to Z2 it takes Z1 to Z2 but then you see uh, what does that mean it, it means that you see Z1 goes down uh, 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 Z1 goes down to X1 okay. So if I take the inverse image I will get all translates of Z1 by L tau 1 okay and well uh, uh, you x1 goes to x2 and if I take the inverse image here I will get all translates of z2 by L tau 2. So what this actually tells you is that B takes uh, z1 uh, plus L tau 1 to well z2 uh, plus L tau 2 in fact B, B uh, takes L tau 1 to L tau 2 okay. So uh, I know that B, t B is just multiplication by A squared and so it B takes 0 to 0 okay. So, uh, so you know that will tell you that B takes L tau 1 to L tau 2 okay because uh, 0 goes to 0 okay whereas 0 here uh, if 0 goes to 0 goes to a certain point then all the elements of the lattice go to that point okay and that will go to a, the point here to which uh, 0 goes to 0 again therefore all the elements of this lat lattice have to go to that lattice and mind you B is an isomorphism okay. So the moral of the story is B takes L tau 1 to L tau 2 alright uh, B of 0 is 0 alright and uh, um, yeah so uh, the point is that uh, because uh, because of this if I am if I am already given an element of SL2 Z like this which takes tau 1 to tau 2 I can cook up B like this and B will take uh, L tau 1 to L tau 2 therefore B will go down to a map F from uh, T tau 1 to T tau 2 okay and this map F will be holomorphic because you see this map F is locally uh, uh, locally this followed by this this map F, F mind you uh, th this is uh, uh, holomorphic covering so it is locally by holomorphic so locally the maps P tau 1 and P tau 2 are locally invertible okay namely if you take uh, an admissible neighborhood below then uh, P tau 1 uh, is in uh, is invertible okay it, it becomes uh, uh, there is an inverse which is a holomorphic map. So actually this map F locally is this map followed by this map followed by this map which is a composition of holomorphic maps and therefore F is locally holomorphic so it is holomorphic because holomorphicity is a local property and well the just exactly the way I got B from uh, f from b I will get f inverse from b inverse and it will tell you that f is a holomorphic isomorphism. So the point is that uh, uh, so this is this was the essence of the proof that you know uh, two uh, 
elements of the upper half plane define the same to define isomorphic uh, tori if and only if they are in the same orbit of psl 2 z ok. Now, I need to have these the, this cal these calculations. So, you see uh, the, the, the point I am going to make is that I am going to bring in the Weierstrass phi functions. So, you see uh, well so this is what I wanted to recall. So, again I draw another diagram. So, here is the complex plane. So, here is b again uh, and well uh, this is uh, p sub tau 1 and here is p sub tau 2 and this is t tau 1 this is t tau 2 and uh, this is an isomorphism this is the isomorphism f and this diagram commutes. Now you see uh, for tau 1 we have defined the Weierstrass phi function ok. The Weierstrass phi function goes all the way uh, uh, goes all the way from I mean it is defined on c it takes values in C union infinity I have to include infinity because uh, it is a meromorphic function. So, I that is the value I am going to assume uh, that, that is the value that I am going to assign to uh, the function at a pole ok and uh, and this is this is my p uh, so this this is my p sub this is my p sub uh, uh, so let me write it somewhere here p sub tau 1 of z. So, this is my phi function alright. Similarly on the target I have another phi function ok. Uh, I have another phi function which is going to be uh, well uh, uh, phi uh, sub tau 2 of z this is another waste as phi function ok. Uh, well you see uh, you expect that uh, you know uh, some kind of commutativity of uh, the diagram should hold and what I am trying to say is you compose b with phi sub tau 2 of z only then you will get a map from this uh, this cover of t tau 1 to this ok and the relationship is between that and p tau 1 itself. So, in fact so if I so, so let me draw one more here and write this as uh, so this is going to be uh, first apply b of z ok then apply p sub uh, tau 2 to that apply phi sub tau 2 to that alright. So, that I get a map I get I go all the way here and then uh, so I get again a map from here to here but then I have to modify it by a correct by a certain multiple and that uh, turns out to be uh, b1 the whole square ok b of 1 the whole square and the fact is that this diagram commutes namely this is the same as this. So, p tau 1 z is actually b1 the whole square uh, b1 the whole square p tau 2 of p of z. So, this is the claim ok this is the claim. So, uh, how does one prove this uh, I it is it is pretty easy in fact you see uh, if you see p uh, uh, p tau 2 uh, 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 so you, you just plug into the formula and use the linearity of b see after all you see p tau 2 of b z <coughs> is by our formula 1 by b z the whole square plus six summation over uh, omega prime in L of tau 2 because you see it is related to tau 2 omega prime not equal to 0 1 by b of z minus omega prime uh, the whole square minus 1 by omega prime uh, omega prime the whole square. This is by the direct definition of the tau function ok, but then notice that you see b of z can be written as uh, b of 1 times z because of because of uh, because of this equation because after all b is just multiplication by n by a square ok. So, if I do that ok I can write it I can write this whole thing as 1 by b of 1 the whole square into 1 by z square plus summation over see write this omega prime as b of omega because you see b uh, uh, b gives an isomorphism of L tau 1 with L tau 2 ok and b takes 0 to 0. Therefore, b takes all non-zero elements of this lattice uh, precisely to non-zero elements of that lattice. So, I can relabel this omega prime as b of omega and let omega vary over non-zero elements of L tau 1 ok. So, I can write this as summation over m omega belonging to L tau 1 omega not equal to 0 and I can write this 
as 1 by z minus omega the whole squared plus 1 by omega squared minus 1 by omega squared which you know is just 1 by b1 the whole squared into uh, the the phi function associated with tau 1 uh, evaluated at z. So, it is a very simple calculation if you notice that b of z is z times b of 1 it is a straightforward calculation okay. So, uh, so this is so that establishes uh, this uh, this claim okay. Now what I am going to do next is look at what happens to the uh, you know uh, from the from the phi function we constructed uh, this uh, uh, this modular function I mean this function which we want to show is mod modular for the congruence mod 2 subgroup. So, we will have to look into that okay. So, you see uh, we have so you see from this uh, uh, see the first thing is what you do is that uh, uh, you try to uh, 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 try to differentiate this because that will tell you uh, the whole point is I have to keep track of this uh, of this E1, E2 and E3 as tau varies because uh, tau is changing from tau 1 to tau 2 alright. So, I have to keep track of E1, E2, E3 but you know the way of uh, looking at it is to think of E1, E2, E3 as zeros of P prime of tau okay. So, I need to look at the derivative. So, if you differentiate if you differentiate uh, this thing P tau this equation P tau 1 of z is equal to B uh, of 1 the whole squared into P sub tau 2 of B of z with respect to z what I will get is I will get P prime tau 1 of z and on the right side I use uh, the chain rule for differentiation. So, what I will get is I will get P prime tau 2 of B of z uh, into B prime of z this is what I will get okay. Now, uh, what does this equation tell me this equation tells me that you see the zeros of P prime tau 1 are precisely the zeros of uh, P prime uh, tau 2 okay uh, I mean if z is a 0 of p prime tau 1 then and only then is b z a 0 of p prime tau 2 that the reason is because this b 1 is non 0 and b prime z you see it is a it is a derivative of a of a Mobius transformation and that is always non 0 okay because a, a Mobius transformation is always a conformal map its derivative never vanishes. So, uh, the if this vanishes if and only if this vanishes. So, what this tells you is that uh, the zeros of p prime tau 1 are precisely uh, mapped by b onto the zeros of p prime tau 2 okay. So, uh, and you know b uh, is is a Mobius transformation. So, it is 1 to 1 and on to. So, these 3 distinct zeros of uh, p prime tau 1 are precisely mapped to the 3 distinct zeros of p prime tau 2 okay. So, uh, so what this tells you is that if I write down this lambda uh, of tau 1 and if I write down lambda of tau 2 the only problem is that it might juggle around with this e 1 e 2 e 3 that is the that is the that is the only freedom that you have okay. And the what uh, and the and the observation is if you put the further restriction that this element that I started with is in the congruence mod 2 subgroup namely that all these entries if we read them mod 2 I get the identity matrix then there is no uh, there is no freedom okay the uh, in other words lambda tau 2 becomes the same as lambda, lambda tau, tau 1 that is what we will see now okay. So, you see so let me write this here this implies that zeros of uh, uh, p prime tau 1 are mapped on to zeros of p prime tau 2 by b okay that is what it says. So, so now uh, now let us bring in the congruence mod uh, mod 2 condition here uh, let me write down what we want to prove you want to prove that lambda of uh, tau 1 is equal to want to show lambda of tau 1 is equal to lambda of tau 2 okay which is lambda of because tau 2 is you have assumed tau 2 is gamma tau 1 plus delta uh, plus divided by alpha tau 1 plus beta uh, if 
uh, uh, gamma delta alpha beta is in the congruence mod 2 subgroup namely if this is congruent to 1001 identity matrix mod 2 okay this is what you want to show. So you see see uh, so you see what is see what is lambda of tau 1 if you remember lambda of tau 1 was uh, well I have erased uh, I think it was uh, 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 it was phi sub tau 1 applied to uh, what was it it was 1 plus tau 1 by 2 or was it tau 1 by 2 uh, yeah 1 plus tau 1 by 2 tau 1 by 2 minus phi sub tau 1 applied to tau 1 by 2 divided by phi sub tau 1 applied to well uh, a half minus phi sub tau 1 applied to tau 2 prime I mean tau 2 by 2 okay this uh, sorry uh, tau 1 by 2 okay this was uh, this was uh, lambda of tau 1 all right and now you see if I if I use the fact that p tau 1 now let me use again this result p tau 1 of something is b1 squared p tau 2 of b applied to that thing okay. So you see this is going to be p tau 2 p tau 2 applied to b uh, you see the, the 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 constant b1 the whole squared is going to come out and get cancelled so I am not going to write it down. So I am simply going to get p tau 1 of b of ha 1 plus tau 1 by 2 minus uh, uh, p tau 2 of uh, uh, b of tau 1 by 2 divided by uh, p tau 2 of uh, b of half minus p tau 2 of uh, 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 b of uh, tau 1 by 2 this is what I get okay here I have used that all right and of course as I said b1 whole squared it just gets cancelled off. Now and I told you that b of half b of tau 1 by 2 and b of 1 plus tau 1 by 2 cannot but be other than uh, half uh, tau 2 by 2 and 1 plus tau 2 by 2 up to a permutation okay. Now what I want to say is that once you have this congruence condition uh, uh, then it has to then you do not have any freedom at all okay and how does one see that that is very very easy to see you see uh, if see let us let us try to write out uh, let us write uh, let us let us do it with b of half see b of half what is b of half b of half is uh, if I look at this uh, if I look at this it is half times b of 1 all right it is half into b of 1 okay and that is equal to well uh, and what is b of 1 you see uh, uh, so b of 1 is uh, yeah b of 1 is a squared and uh, it is 1 by alpha tau 1 plus beta okay and that is also equal to tau 2 by gamma tau 1 plus delta so let me write that down it is it is uh, uh, alpha, so it is uh, half into uh, a b of 1 is a squared which is 1 by alpha tau 1 plus beta it is also half into uh, tau 2 divided by uh, gamma tau 1 plus delta okay now what you do is that uh, 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 now what you do is try to write tau 1 in terms of tau 2 see because this this takes tau 1 to tau 2 so it is inverse will take tau 2 to tau 1 okay you write that okay so what you will get is essentially if you write that down you will get the following thing uh, uh, you see uh, I will get uh, you will get tau 1 so let me write it down tau 1 is just b beta tau 2 minus delta divided by minus alpha tau 2 uh, plus gamma okay because you know beta minus delta minus alpha gamma is precisely the inverse of this matrix uh, ga, uh, gamma delta alpha beta the, the inverse of this matrix is just simply beta minus delta minus alpha uh, gamma that is precisely what I have written here okay that that will take uh, uh, tau 2 to tau 1 okay now you you plug this in in the last one and write everything in terms of tau 2 
So, you will get uh, use this to get you will get well you will get b of half. Uh, so, let me try to write it here. to get uh, b of half is equal to well what you will get is the following uh, you will get uh, uh, you will get minus alpha tau 2 plus gamma by 2 this is what you will get okay if you if you simplify it you will get this all right and uh, use this use this one and you also make use of the fact that uh, the determinant is 1 okay you will get this, but then you see you can write it as well you know I can write it as half okay uh, minus uh, half plus uh, I plus minus alpha tau 2 plus gamma by 2 then I can write it as half plus well uh, you know uh, I can write it as uh, uh, minus of uh, 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 yeah I mean it does not matter minus of alpha minus I uh, minus of alpha plus 1 uh, correct minus of alpha plus 1 uh, into uh, uh, minus of uh, no I will get I will get gamma minus 1 gamma minus 1 by 2 okay plus uh, uh, minus alpha by 2 times tau 2 see this is what I will get what I will get is uh, I, I keep this half as it is and then I write this I absorb this minus half inside and then write it as gamma minus 1 by 2 plus this. Now you see if if this condition holds then you see gamma minus 1 is divisible by 2 okay that means this is an integer okay and uh, and you see alpha alpha is 0 mod 2 that means alpha is divisible by 2 so alpha by 2 is also an integer what does this tell you this tells you that this guy here on this side is an element in L of tau 2 this is an element in L of tau 2. So, what it will tell you is B of half is half plus an element of L of tau 2 okay. So, you see uh, so you see P tau 2 of B of half will be just P tau 2 of half plus an element of L tau 2 but P tau 2 is periodic with respect to elements of L tau 2. So, you will simply get P tau 2 of half okay you do the same carry over the same argument to the others. So, what you will get you will similarly similarly you will get B of uh, uh, tau 1 by 2 is tau 1 by 2 plus uh, an element of L of tau 2 and you will get uh, uh, so in fact, I should write tau 2 by 2 okay and you will get b of 1 plus tau 1 by 2 is equal to uh, 1 plus tau 2 by 2 plus an element of L of tau 2 okay. Now, if you plug in all these things here okay and realize that p tau 2 is period is is periodic with respect to the lattice tau 2 you will see you will simply get lambda tau 2. So, which gives which gives uh, lambda of tau 1 is equal to lambda of tau 2 which is what we wanted to prove. So, you see it is a very simple calculation all right the only thing is you have to keep track of this earlier uh, uh, I mean all these uh, formulae that we got in this uh, in this earlier proof okay then it is kind of uh, very easy to write down and to see that uh, uh, this lambda is indeed a modular function okay uh, modular function for the congruence mod 2 subgroup. So, the next job will be to somehow use lambda to cook up another function which is modular for the whole unimodular group okay and that will be that will give rise to uh, essentially an invariant that invariant is called the j invariant of the elliptic curve uh, I mean I am going to tell you uh, how uh, this this differential equation satisfied the, by the Weierstrass phi function which I remarked uh, looks like a cubic equation okay. Uh, so, it is actually an elliptic curve all right and uh, uh, the fact is that you are getting an invariant for that elliptic curve. So, uh, uh, therefore, the function that you are going to cook up using lambda which is going to be invariant under the full uh, unimodular group 
that's called that is going to be, that is will be called the elliptic modular function okay and it's called the j it's called the j function it will give you what is called the j invariant of an elliptic curve and elliptic curves are the same as uh, uh, complex one dimensional tori okay so we'll see that in the forthcoming lectures